All right, friends, we have had the last lab of this um, journey. Um, you've pulled it through to this point um, due to your resolve and um, it promises to be well worthwhile now and year after as you pursue your good courses as professionals, as PPP um, players and in, the, in the ecosystem of PPP processes. Um, at this very point, we would like to look at operations and and work. And um, these are the soft parts of uh, um, ensuring all the technical bits and pieces we've learned um, comes together nicely for the effectiveness of the project and the eventual success and satisfaction of all parties, even the public or the community to which this service is meant for. Um, um, so, so our outline goes dogs overview of the operations and hand back phase. And back phase is because at some point the PPP process would close out and it will be handed back to those who procure the PPP. Even if it will be renewed, there will be a hand back at some point. Contract management and monitoring during the operations phase. Yes, yeah. we'll be monitoring and evaluation observation to be sure that there are no deviations from the contract. There are no foul pleas. There's consistency to, to what is in white and black. Contract management and administrative process. Managing private partners under, under performance and non-compliance in cases where such shortfalls occur, where such shortfalls occur, yeah managing finances and um, those shortfalls that I earlier spoke to, it's not like you want those to occur, but you must make provisions for, for, for curbing those in cases where they occur. Yeah, regulatory requirements, very variation management, be it the yeah, variations, at least the variation should not be as devi not deviate so significantly from, from the primaries, from what has been happening issue agreed in white and black. You know, variation can come to play in the case of maybe um, maybe changing where you source for some resource based on dynamics of time, but it shouldn't contravene regulations. It shouldn't contravene ethics, you know, and all of those would go into deep consideration. Relationship management, issue management, dispute resolution, that's necessary. Back to variation management. It can even be maybe some variations in, in, in even the composition of the special approval vehicle, maybe halfway in the arrangement, a bank that was a member of the SPV, maybe there was a regulation by the central bank for some fiscal consolidation, um, I say fiscal cons bank, bank consolidation or measures and acquisition. And the bank has changed identity. It means that the new identity might accept the obligations of the previous bank. But I want to pull out, you know, all those nuances comes in and you can't control those. And um, so they are thinking around those. You think about exigencies and managing expiry, default and early termination processes. So all of this, putting them into context, you'll be able to consummate a good PPPD and they very a sector, a context, and, and 
I'm not exactly in the same situation. As it applies to you, so will it apply to me? No, not necessarily. So, but the principles and the and the framework will be consistent. Um, so we go to the beginning um, overview of the operations and handback fees. Um, operation and handback are the final fees of a PPP project. You operate the project when the contract has been signed, and that is basically the climax of the old arrangement. And so all the, the semi-final um, close to the end, because the end ideally is the handback fees. It generally involves handling over of the asset or the operations of the asset to the relevant party. The following must occur at the end of the construction phase. We use construction here, but it can also be in the case of service. Um, so, so, or a mix of both. Um, so the private partner delivers the service in accordance to the output specification in the PVB contract and maintains the project asset. That's operation. The government monitors the private parties, partners' compliance and performance. That's the sort of monitoring that goes on in the operations. Because mind you, the private sector was just procured to render a government service. Government is responsible for provision of roads, provision of provision of public service, provision of this. And if they have reasons to bring in the private sector to procure, to deliver such for efficiency and then effective implementation, it still does not exonerate the fact that government is the provider of such service and has only procured the private sector to do that. So, so, so invariably, the government has a oversight duty, but not a prescriptive role to play in the performance of such service in due time. And so all of this goes into it, and then the, 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 the private sector, at the termination of the duration, for which the arrangement was considered and back. And so there needs to be a commonly agreed exit and add back and back strategy. And that needs to be considered or discussed and agreed at the initial before even the contract is signed, because it will even be a component of the contract stating the terms and the conditions and the common grounds on which exit and handback will happen, on which operations of the project will happen, and on which monitoring and money processes of the government will happen. So all of those are necessary. So contract management and monitoring during the operation phase and helps to ensure how hotel propensities of poor management and project failure. Yeah, so uh, such negative outcomes in the absence of this would not be in, uh, would not be helpful in the interest of the public. So the, the government paying for services which are not being received or are not being performed satisfactorily is a negative for the public because it is public money. And even if the government is not making explicit payments, maybe the government is making commitments in kind, those have opportunity costs. And so if the project is not being satisfactorily delivered, the opportunity costs of those commitments from the government is a loss to the public who the government is obligated to. But the opportunity cost means government could have re received more taxes, more, dis uh, more, 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 more commitments that had to the fiscal puffers. 
and to we want to be sure there are no room for slack. The government being unable to foresee operations and management of contractors, uh, operation and management failures of contractors, and contingency measures, um, and failing to put contingency measures in place is also a cost to the public. So in case where the government wasn't in the know that there could be chances for down to maybe they procured the service of a unionized of a unionized private sector player, or a sector that's heavily unionized. And, and the, maybe in the case where the unions are erratic, randomly, not even the private party, but the union. And through the pressure influence, the private party is obligated, you know, to, to those nuances need to be looked into to be sure everything necessary for val delivery of value to the public is not compromised. Um, so, so that's that sound project management is therefore crucial for successful PPP delivery. Um, so it helps to ensure monitoring and management of project delivery, performance against service outputs, and monitoring and managing changes, managing disputes, managing and over processes, at the end of the contract. That's going to be necessary to keep everyone on the same page. Sound management helps to one maximize the chances of actual of contractual performance in accordance with contractual re requirements, optimize the performance of the project, support con continuous development, quality improvement and innovation through the life of the contract, ensure delivery of best value, you get me, and all of the many other possibilities, even beyond what is reeled out in this presentation, but you feel free to read it, and feel free to read the texts and the references. Also feel free to read the full lecture narrative. There's a, there's a note that, I mean, I'm sure you have been always making recourse to beyond the presentation is on the course platform visited. Um, so, so, so that's that. Um, monitor and manage project delivery and service output is one of the um, considerations in contract management and administrative process. Performance monitoring, you must, there must be clear, clear set out um, business or or set um, set set conditions that performance can be measured against to be sure that the project is on track, um, and those should be commonly agreed, such that everyone now knows is committed to those. So it might be. For instance, an hospital facility, you want to be sure that maybe you want to, a, a yardstick can be, um, I'm, 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 how do I put this now? Um, a yardstick might be, maybe, maybe, maybe a yardstick would be the, the management of um, the hospital. Um, service delivery processes um, based on assessments from 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 hospital um, from from the patients. So there might be a a feedback mechanism where there's provisions for um, the the patients or the people who receive services to 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 give an assessment and across different important um, pockets. Oh, maybe the service, the service comes session, they are, they are punctual, they are up and doing, and you want to be sure that they don't have a shortfall of less than 70% assessment on punctuality in that aspect, in that session. Or maybe the cash 
or both the, the cash cashier session where payments are made. They are efficient. There are no kickbacks. There are no overcharge. I know we want to be sure that and there are rooms for access. I'm just in, in thinking and giving you possibilities of such monitoring and evaluation of monitoring procedures. And this, this, there's a breadth of room for innovation and creativity on how this can play out. The monitoring performance system is primarily focused on service performance, but it will also track and monitor other breaches of contracts. So we need to think through it to be sure that we are not oblivious of the adequacy or inadequacy in the project delivery by the private sector or even otherwise. Um, if the level of service performance is under the required standard or the penalties or deductions that might be applicable in case where such shortfalls are, you need to be clearly stipulated to, yeah, there might be arrangements for carrots and stick, and those need to be clearly stipulated, and then the measuring and monitoring measures, arrangements for those should be also clear. So, so you need to think about that. And then, and it needs to be negotiated and commonly agreed. And you see the beauty of this process is, it's not like a private sector can be so vested and doesn't want merit because he is not the only one that is under consideration. In maybe at the last stage, there might be five, five, five prospects that are good for the project, but we just need one. So every private partner is wearing his thinking hat, very reasonable, because when he gets it wrong, it might just be um, disqualifying he himself. I'm sorry I'm using he or she for, for to, to characterize an, an entity, but that's the message I'm trying to get across. Um, so um, putting all this into consideration helps managing changes not provided for in the B2B contracts. You know, no matter how watertight such contracts might be, it can be pretty sure that there might still be miscellaneous, still be one or two things that have slipped off the crack, not because of negligence or inadequate planning or structuring, but in such occasions, there would be provisions to see how to manage that. And there should be con common, common consensus on if such should occur, how do we put this into context? How do we manage for this? In such cases, the contract management manual should clearly state what procedure needs to be followed or who the implementer or decision taker should be. See, and the beauty of it is that if we follow all of the considerations from module one to module four, module eight, We'll be sure that the chances for aphasad or failed considerations in the successful delivery of PPP from start to finish would be very minimized. Yeah. So we need to think about dispute resolution, the mode of um, conflict settlement, um, over technical issues or differences in contract interpretation. You know, I said it at some point in the previous model to be put in place. Is it traditional court processes? Are you consenting to arbitration? You know, alternative dispute resolution using third party arbitrators. You want to be sure you're in the interest of the state is um, secured, um, is it, or uh, and the interest of the private sector party is secured? Is it an is it an in-house arbitrator that must be consulted as the arbitrage party, or is it an external? And what are the arbitration laws that will be 
used is if it's an international or treating organization arbitration law of the host country of the party the private party you know you don't want to be negligent of this integrity such that there are, it doesn't become a disservice to to the country or to the private party in which case so so all those go in exit and handbag of the assets to government if a contract generally specifies the required conditions of the facility at the end of the contract term at the point of handback it should stipulate the conditions on which the facility should be ended you don't be hand back field facilities or things facilities that are sort of like um not in the best of operational states due to servicing challenge servicing gaps or stuff everything should be well stipulated and not assumed i i are you are you with me um so it needs to be well laid out even in what goes into the contract to manage the financial risk associated with and back some PPP contract require the private sector to establish and back reserve account that begins to accrue towards the end of the contract. This may be used for planned, unplanned repairs required prior or shortly after the facility is handed back to the government. And many times, government may renew the PPP arrangement and is not obligated to renew it with the same operator. Can renew it by going through a round of new PPP cycle and um, PPP um, procurement cycle and getting another operator. All those need to be put into context. I mean, want to be sure that if it chooses to bring in a new operator after the legitimate closeout of the initial PPP contract, the existing PPP operator is not doing something disadvantageous to the successful operation of any new PPP operator who might come in to continue the process or anything disadvantageous to the government if the government so chooses to continue operating the project by the, 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 the service directly by itself. So, so all that needs to be clearly um, laid out without assumptions. So, so, so we, partners need to be compliant with process. Typical mechanisms used to deal with non-compliance and contract breaches are usually mechanisms that have that have financial consequences. Carrots, sticks, and particularly sticks in this case. And so, in government paid contract, financial consequences imposed by the contract for service performance failure on the performance situation may take the form of payment deductions and user paid contract financial consequences due to lack of performance will most often result in penalties through penalty systems maybe through uh, some some fines placed by the court stuff or even through the arbitral charges that will be levied on the non-compliant party in the contractual arrangement. So, so all of those need to be well laid out and stipulated. Performance monitoring methodology, the um, replete here, and even in the lecture and narratives, um, the level of performance required to achieve the output needs to be clear in such methodology. The means that the institution will use to monitor private party performance it needs to be clear. It might be true service, it might be true mystery shopping. Sometimes you want to just unannounced visits and inspections. It, it's, it's, it's a broad basket. I mean, but it needs to be clear that it might not be prescriptive that we must always do it like this, but the government can stipulate a set of 
also option or the private sector can simulate this set of possible plausible considerations such that it's always best to monitor when the 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 the, the other party is not so so cautious of your monitoring so so that you can really see the true picture of things um, because if your party knows what you will do when you monitor and you monitor you know it's not out of place they would have a measure of knowledge but if they know fully whether it's true the station and you are serving them the time of the day, all those might compromise the quality of assessment and general judgment. It may only be through public feedback. I want to really hear the public. What because the public are the eye of the government, seeing the undoings and the effectiveness of the projects. So you want to take all those into context and be sure that you are in the interest, either party is in the interest of the public serving value to everyone. The consequences for the private partner, private partner of a failure to meet um, required le level, uh, maybe that connotes poor performance, might mean in some cases, even termination of the contract, if, if, if it's so grievous. Um, but those terms should be provided in the contract. Oh, in the case of default, it might, you know, there are ways the legal clauses are stipulated, it might imply a termination or seizure of the existing arrangement, it might imply arbitrage or legal actions, you know, those things need to be clear, no assumption, no, 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 no looseness about those. Um, um, so, so you, 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 you see, as we earlier said, mystery shoppers, sampling, many things could go into helping to assess um, compliance to a process. Um, guys, you can always uh, subsume yourself into the depth of this. Um, I have pretty much um, touched on everything that can constantly be um, communicated even across slides yet to be looked into, um, but certainly nothing is left uncovered. Um, for due diligence as a student, we really don't want to, we really want to domesticate the learnings deeply 